If you've clicked onto this video, you most probably are thinking right now, why on earth has he bought another Nintendo Switch? And you would be correct in thinking like that. Why has this Switch murderer gone out of his way to purposely hurt another Nintendo Switch? Today is Redemption Day. Before I actually show you guys the Nintendo Switch, big shout out to Luke Davis, or Davies maybe, who recommended talcum powder Yes, that's right. Johnson's baby powder, it just makes the process of putting the gloves on so much easier. Big shout out to you, my friend. The listing states, supposedly, the screen has two to three scratch marks. Only fault is with the charge, only being the key word here. The only fault is with the charging port. Sometimes it charges, sometimes it doesn't. Back has scratches as seen in pictures. So first off, we're gonna set our heat gun to 480 degrees Celsius with an airflow speed of, I'm gonna go four out of eight, so halfway. Oh dear, we have a massive issue. Every single one bar three, possibly two pins underneath the port, all the rest are still nicely, firmly planted on the motherboard. What do I mean by that? Well, this is what I mean by that. It's doable, but it's a very, very timely repair. We better get cracking. This is how we're currently looking. We got that, we got that. We got that, and we got that. I think we're gonna be okay. We just need to restore these traces and make sure we restore the traces successfully. Not only that, we then need to actually get the port on. That's gonna be our toughest challenge. I do make it very, very difficult for myself, don't I? At this point, I have realized that it's not doable for somebody with my skill level. I think the only ways to get around this is to buy a smaller wire, so like a 0.05 or something along those lines, and B, I shouldn't have messed this up to begin with. In my head, if I kept that heat on any longer, I'm melting the plastic, and the plastic is getting stuck in here, and I can't tell you how long I've been working on this now, tonight. I think it's been about four hours so far, and as you can see, I am just making it worse <laughs> and worse and worse. I'm just gonna tidy up this area as much as I can. I'm gonna take the solder off and um, get it back to a normal-ish state. There's a very, very like sore sight for me to see. We actually managed to get all the solder out of the holding pins as well, but obviously this one has now got soldered back in because of the amount of solder that I was putting on here. I don't know if this is fixable. I'm very far out of my depth at the moment. I think sometimes you have to admit it. You have to own it and you have to say, look, I don't, <laughs> I'm not competent enough for this repair. Say I do get my hands on some 0.05 mil wire and I manage to just tack them down. What happens when I apply hot air to put this charging port back on? Surely all of these are going to come loose, you know? What sucks is how optimistic I was. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, look, we messed up two, we can't mess up three, that's not gonna happen. I'm two for two mess ups on charging ports, two for two. I'm gonna include that Nintendo Switch fail because that's what this channel's all about, right? I am just gonna go through some things I've received because it's nice to update you guys on the tools that I have and I even have my first ever P.O. Box gift that we're gonna open right now. After that, I'll be trying to fix an Xbox One original that cost me £10, £20 in total for postage. Let's get on with it. And here we have it. I'm gonna leave this bad boy until last because this is the PO box opening, so I will do that in a second. But just gonna run through some really quick bits. First off, I've ordered some more capacitors for the PS3 fixes to replace the NEC token chips. I'm really, really looking forward to doing this, even if it doesn't work. I might do this on a live stream instead of a video and then convert it to a video afterwards, but I have a lot of them. Next up, I have some new tweezers, two of them. I have some straight ones, and these look pretty cool in my opinion. So I have some straight ones here. They don't open too much, which yeah, I guess is like kind of a good thing, especially if you're working on smaller chips and stuff. So that's really, really good. And then this pair have more of a bend to them at the end. I'm really, really looking forward to using these. I've got a feeling though they're gonna get hot. We have, oh, it's already open. I purchased another hard drive. 
Uh, this is the exact same one, so it's a Toshiba. Three out of three of the last Xbox One repairs I've done have pretty much been hard drive issues, so I have purchased another one. Here we have the Xbox that we picked up for £10. Yes, £10. I got this on bidding from eBay. It was £20 in total, so it was £10.51 for the actual Xbox itself, and then it was £9.99, giving us a total of £20.50 for delivery as well. The listing states that the console powers on for a few seconds and then turns off. It does not have a hard drive inside. The seal is not intact. It's the console only. I've got faith. I've really got faith. Now, big shout out to Wayne's new repairs. He was kind enough to send me this package, I think about a month ago when I opened the PO box and for whatever reason, it got lost somewhere, but now it is in safe, good hands. Let's find out what he put in this package. All right, I think they call it a TS100 soldering iron but I just want to confirm. He's also included some leaded solder for us as well. So I can add this to SMD components or board holes or whatever to just lower that melting temperature to make stuff easier to replace. So I'm really looking forward to having this. Thank you so much, Wayne. That is incredibly kind of you. And then you have this bad boy, which is, like I thought, a TS100 soldering iron. This looks absolutely incredible. It comes with an Allen key and some spare screws for it as well. I've just put this in and tightened it up and look how sleek this looks, man. I have no idea how it works, so I will have to give the instructions a good old read, but thank you so much, Wayne. I know this isn't a, a cheap soldering iron and it feels amazing quality and I can't wait to use this. Without further ado, let's crack on with this beauty. Pull up here. Ah, there's no sync button. Pop here. I was gonna say clip here, clip here, and clip here. Lay down flat and slowly have a look and see what's going on. All right, we're looking good. Components inside looking all right. So that all looks fine. That looks nicely intact. Love to see it. And now it's time for a lot of screws. And as expected, no hard drive. This is the hard drive bay where it usually sits and there's nothing there. What they've also not done is included the screws. So if I take this bay out, usually you'd have screws here, 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 and here. So there's four of them. Luckily, I have spare screws. So I've got my screws over here, and what I'm gonna do is take the new hard drive, I've literally just taken it out of the packet, and I'm gonna place it onto the hard drive tray. Supposedly fresh out of the box, I should be able to put this in and it worked, but again, I don't know if that is the error. There is a possibility that this just doesn't boot or turns on and ends off. This is just like, from me doing my previous Xbox videos, this seems to be the most common issue with Xbox Ones that I've bought on eBay. So I'm just gonna try this. But as you can see, I've now screwed it in. I'm just gonna place it back into the Xbox, seat it down and plug in the power and data. And there we go, new hard drive has been installed. I'm gonna take you over to a different camera now where we're gonna have a look and see what actually happens on the TV screen. And here we go, I'm just gonna plug in the power cable at the back. This is a known good charger, by the way. Fans spun a little bit, I saw that. Now we're gonna turn the Xbox on. Here we go. It's staying on, it's not turning off. Do we get an image, is the question. Nothing just yet. I see it's been a good couple of minutes. Now we still have nothing on the screen. However, I've also changed HDMI cable as well. When I pull the HDMI cable out, eventually on the screen, it does display no video signal. I don't know if you guys can see that, probably not. There we go. The fact that the Xbox is still on is a good sign, but I think there's something wrong with either the HDMI chip or the HDMI port itself. Let's investigate. I'm just taking the last few screws out of this just to get down to the motherboard to make it a little bit easier on myself. The thermal paste under there is pretty dry. I've just done a quick visual inspection of the HDMI port itself and the area surrounding the port. And to be honest with you, it looks fine. It's a tiny bit loose, but the pins on there, they all look connected, especially on the other side of the board as well. Um, it's hard on my microscope to get an image, purely because of the fact the board is so big, it doesn't actually fit on my desk. I've just seen a technique online. You can update the Xbox by holding down the sync button, the power button, and the disc eject button. So I know that I've already taken this apart, but I'm gonna put it back together quickly and give that a try and see if it troubleshoots and then forces the update to the hard drive. Maybe that will give us an image, let's find out. Okay, so it's now just getting a bit later, later, and later, and I've tried a few different things, and I'm gonna try and explain this the best that I can. I have two good, working 500 gigabyte hard drives. When I say good and working, they're recognized by my PC. I'm able to clean them. I'm able to partition them as well with the Xbox One master script. I've tried them unallocated. I've tried them with the script and neither of them seem to be working. In fact, this is now what happens when I go to power on the Xbox. Again, I know that this is a good hard drive. I'm gonna power it on. You get the tiny little bit of fan spin and then it turns off and you can hear the hard drive ticking. So I'm gonna swap them over now. I'm gonna try again. 
So I'll just turn it on, you can see from the light down by my thumb. And it's just turned off. And it makes like a clicking noise as well. But I know that these hard drives are good, both of them. This one being brand new, and this one being in an Xbox that was working, it's now been cleaned out, etc. The Xbox was working fine and staying on until I took everything apart and put it back together. It's almost now like it just doesn't get past that initial Xbox checking stage, you know? Again, on. And then it's just going to turn off, look. Because the fan doesn't even kick in. I guess in a really weird way, it's actually nice to have an Xbox that, I don't know if this is a hard drive issue, I don't think it is because I've got two that are fine. But it's nice to have an Xbox that potentially carries another fault, hence why it's not turning on. I'm going to need help with this, so what I'll do is I'll chuck up a live stream on Sunday the 12th. <laughs> I just had to check the calendar. On Sunday the 12th of September. And hopefully uh, we can all work together to get this resolved. If not... That's fine, we just have another spares and repairs, but it's a known good power supply and I know that because I've used it in all my Xbox One videos. It's just weird how I took it apart and I've put it back together and now it's not working or, or turning on for a certain amount of time. We've had a couple of fails this video and I'm sure there's gonna be some more things that you guys want me to try in the live stream. So if you are around, it's gonna be about 2 p.m. GMT. I'd like to get some practice in like soldering and stuff. So I really do actually hope it's a chip on the board or something, but I do highly doubt that. Thank you so much for watching guys. I hope you do enjoy your weekend. And if you're around tomorrow for the live stream, I will see you then. Thanks for watching. Peace.